This video was approved by the Comics Code Authority. For a comic book to be approved by the Comics Code Authority, it had to follow all of these 40 rules and if one rule wasn't followed, it would not have the stamp or be sold in stores. We will talk about the 5 main rules later. We were able to interview a comic book expert named Hilton Price. We will show each question and answer chronologically in the documentary, but first, you need to stop right there as we talk about the beginning of comics, the golden age. Mr. Price was asked, what really started the golden age of comic books? Give me a song that's robust, feeling the way I am. Any old band will go bust if it ain't got The first issue of Action Comics came out in June 1938. Some say this was the beginning of the golden age of comics because of the introduction of Superman. Less than a year later, Detective Comics came out with issue number 27 in May 1939 featuring Batman. The Golden Age of Comics. This lasted from 1938 to the early 50s. We asked Mr. Price, why was the Golden Age of Comics set to have stopped in the early 50s? Do you think the CCACL has anything to do with it? Sing me a swing song and let me dance Mr. Trombone, play some corn I ain't caring what notes Mr. Trumpet, grab a horn Eerie Comics is a horror genre comic series that started in 1947. It is known for starting this genre which led to the Comics Code Authority seal. The beginning of Comics Code Authority. How it started. Mr. Price was asked, what are your thoughts on the CCA seal? Do you think it was really necessary to have the censorship? Why or why not? The Comics Magazine Association of America, or CMAA for short, decided that in September 1954, there should be a stamp on each cover of a comic book. In order for that comic book to get the CCA stamp, they have to obey each and every rule. If they follow these rules, they could be sold in stores. This prevented children from buying hard comic books. The CMAA believed that this would be better for children. Many people, however, believe that the only reason the Comics Magazine Association of America enforced this new rule was because of a new book in 1954 titled Seduction of the Innocent by Frederick Wordham. Frederick Wordham was a child psychiatrist that thought comics were running to a child's brain. He didn't want children to buy these type of books. He wrote a book to inform parents how bad comic books really are. The CMAA must have been scared of getting in trouble and losing money, so they decided to make the Comics Code Authority seal. Back onto the rules. Each CCA rule contributed to getting a comic book approved, but we will talk about what we think are the five most important rules of the Comics Code Authority. 1. Crimes shall never be presented in such a way as to create sympathy for the criminal, to promote distrust of the forces of law and justice, or to inspire others with a desire to imitate criminals. This simply means that you can't feel bad for the criminal and think what he's doing is right. It also says that you shouldn't do what the criminal is doing. Lastly, it can't persuade someone to not like or disagree with the law. 2. Scenes dealing with or instruments associated with walking dead, torture, vampires, and vampirism, ghouls, cannibalism, and werewolfism are prohibited. This rule is to prevent children from getting scared and being traumatized for the rest of their life. 3. Inclusion of stories dealing with evil shall be used or shall be published only where the intent is to illustrate a moral issue and in no case shall evil be presented alluringly nor as to injure the sensibilities of the reader. What this CCA rule is trying to say is that comics can only have bad people or criminals if it shows what the bad person is doing is wrong and to not do what they are doing. The second part states that the evil or the criminal cannot say anything or do anything that can hurt someone's feelings or emotion. 4. No comic magazine shall use the word horror or terror in its title. 
This is a simple but important rule. If this is to protect hard, then it shouldn't have a hard title, even if, for example, it says hard no more. This helps notify children that the comic book is safe. 5. This is the last and probably most important rule. In every instance, good shall triumph over evil and the criminal punished for his misdeeds. Even though this protects children in believing superheroes always win, it is a very controversial rule. This is the reason why the Joker loses against Batman. This is the reason why the Loki loses against Thor. Because of the CCA, comic books that had a CCA stamp on its cover always had a superhero as a winner and the villain as a loser. So there it was. Started in 1954, every comic book cover needed to have a small Comics Code Authority seal just so it could be sold in stores. Some big comic book companies like Marvel, DC, and Archie didn't even really need to change anything and weren't affected with this change at all. 14 years after the Comics Code Authority, new types of comic books came out. These were called underground comics. Underground comics are comic books that are relevant or feature satire in them. None of these follow the rules of the comics code, hence the name Underground. Underground Comics started in 1968. Some people have said that there is one man who is supposed to be the father of Underground Comics, and that man is Robert Crumb. Robert Crumb started writing and creating comic books in 1968. He is the creator of a very famous Underground Comics company called Zap Comics. Zap Comics is a very satirical type of underground comics. It was never intended to be approved by the Comics Code Authority, as Mr. Natural himself said. The whole universe is completely insane. Yep. Angel Food McSpade is another Zap Comics character. In her picture, it says, she's all heart. And she replies, the rest of me ain't bad either. Angel Food is always naked, so she is clearly not approved by the Comics Code Authority. Fritz the Cat is another R. Crumb character. This shows how much Robert Crumb truly inspired to start the underground comics wagon and the horror story wagon. Why do you believe the CCA seal started dying out after the 80s? nineteen eighties to early two thousands. The abandonment. It's the eighties and punk and rap arrived along with violent movies. This is when comic books would no longer be popular. Not that many people wanted comic books anymore because the ones with the seal were not able to keep up. A lot of comic book companies started leaving it so they could make comic books more exciting. Also because of this, the CMAA decided to make the seal less strict. It's now the early 2000s. People are starting to not care about the CCA anymore. Comic book publishers stopped sending comic books to be approved. Marvel, Bongo, DC, and Archie were the last major comic book companies that still carry the seal. They carried it for so long due to the fact that they knew they were going to get approved anyways. In 2001, Marvel decided to leave the seal because there was no longer any use to carry it. Bongo did the same in 2010. In January 2011, DC and Archie both dropped the seal. Archie was the last to drop the seal, and after that, the seal was retired, and all the rights of the seal now belong to the Comic Book League Defense Fund. Mr. Price was asked, How do you think the CCA seal relates to rights and responsibilities? Comics Code Authority relates to this year's topic, Rights and Responsibilities, because the CCA seal limited comic book rights, causing them to have the responsibility to follow the rules in order to get approved by the CCA. Mm -hmm.